My name is Bear Siragusa, and you are listening to the Hunting Hound Podcast, presented by W. Hunting Supply. joined from his car yes from my car ethan webster hi how's it going it is going good man how are you doing good excellent i'm in my car because uh my daughter decided she was going to be a dinosaur when i told her i had something to do gotcha so she was running around the house screaming and uh stomping her feet that sounds about right that sounds about right. How many kids do you have? Uh, just two. Just two? The other one yep. doesn't walk. Um, it's right around the corner here. That's uh, that's an intense period when they just start they just start to do the walking thing. I remembered a young couple who had kids a few years after we did ask me once. Like, what is it like when they start to walk? And I was like, imagine mm-hmm. a two-year-long, more or less constant panic attack. And that's about what it's like. <laughs> Just like waiting for them to split. Their a lot of walking open. and a lot of bouncing. A lot of bouncing. A lot of. Oh, yeah. A lot of yeah. falls. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> head bumps. Nosebleeds. Yeah, the works. It's good. Good times. Good times. But this is not a. Oh, yeah. Child raising podcast, I suppose. But yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I've wanted to talk to you for a <laughs> while. Um, and uh, it's taken us a little bit of time to get this one nailed down uh because yeah it seems like every time we've scheduled something <laughs> something crazy's happened that's kept us from being able to sit down so i appreciate you oh, hanging in there and c- c- coming every on time with me. yeah so yeah no problem at all you are on uh, most people are not probably not going to recognize the f- first and last name but they may recognize you from Facebook as HTH Hounds. Yes. Hebron Trash that's, Hounds. Uh, that's just what I call my kennel. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where did that name come um, from? I just came up with that name. I came up with it mostly because, you know, everybody's a... Uh, they like to make fun of blue ticks and always say they're trashy and everything like that or slow. So I just kind of had a little play with words there. I'm like, hey, I'll just call them the Hebron trash hounds then. <laughs> cut, just cut people off at the pass. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. Then they, you know, once I tell them, once I tell them I got blue ticks, most of the time they got, they got a bunch of words to say anyway. <laughs> gotcha. Well, one thing, uh, yeah, obviously I want to talk to you about your dogs. You've got, you run blue ticks. How did you, I guess, let's start with, how did you get started in the hounds in the first place? Well, I kind of, I kind of fell into, I kind of fell into it. Uh, I've always been interested in hunting, uh, deer hunting really never did it for me. Uh, my family mm-hmm. didn't run hounds or anything like that. Uh, I actually had a, had a, had a guy take me out uh, bobcat hunting in the winter time and I went out a few times, never did anything, never did anything, never caught anything. And then after season, uh, we can still run it past the kill season here mm-hmm. in, in the winter. And we ended up catching one. And ever since that day, I was hooked. And uh, then the Valentine's Day after that, my wife got me a hound, a blue tick, which mm-hmm. she says is the most regrettable decision she's ever made. Um. Because it completely spiraled out of control after that, but she loves it. I don't think she loves it as much as I do, but she loves it. Good. That's and good. then, uh, yeah, after that, I kind of, I kind of started getting into getting into bear hunting. Uh, I had a couple walkers. I had a couple walkers. I've tried a couple plots, and I've just kind of, you know, stuck with the blue tick since then. They've the other ones have not really worked out for me. Just okay plots. A lot of people love plots. They just have a little bit of a different personality. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. The walkers just, I've seen some great walkers. I got nothing against them, but I just like the blue dogs. I mean, that 
that makes sense, man. You know, it's it's one of those funny things where it seems like so often with the people I've talked to that the first really good dog that they see tends to be the one that sets the not only sets the standard but sets them on the 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 breed. You know, so if the first really oh, I'd agree, awesome dog you see is blue, you're going to be a blue tick guy and you know, vice with the plots as well. It's like plots on the walkers and, mm-hmm. you know even yeah the, the guy that got me started was a blue tick guy and uh since then i just i just kind of stuck with that mm-hmm. gotcha that's interesting did your dogs the guy who got you started did your original blue tick come from him it did yeah yeah okay. the first the first dog i ever got was a ray it's called a, the, the line is a ray bread blue tick I've, it's crow i've told you about him before oh yeah he's uh he's always finding crow. himself in all sor- all sorts of problems and in, in trouble and mm-hmm. uh i i started out with just him and i went the first bear season i think i went out just about every single day starting when he was about six months old and literally just every day, nothing, every day, nothing. I'd find a track, put them on it, nothing. And it, it took a while, but it, uh, finally started clicking around eight months for him. Mm-hmm. And I walked in to a bait. This is when baiting was legal. Well, you can bait here for about 30 days before the season. And he just picks his head up. And at this point, I had another, I had another walker that I don't have anymore in his and a great big walker. I had two of them actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, he picks his head up and it starts barking and just gone. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, there must be a deer in here. Cause that's what he had been. <laughs> I had taken him out and he'll start barking. He's come back with deer legs and parts and bones, every, everything except anything that he's supposed to change. Right. Or supposed to, supposed to get. <laughs> and, uh, and I was me and my wife and this older gentleman that hunted with us. Uh, he didn't have dogs or just, beat bopping around you know he'd ride around in the side by side and stuff like that and we ended up just walking and it was like a it, they ran it two miles and a couple of them showed tree that that walker i got it was an older walker mm-hmm. and he wouldn't start anything but he was a, he was a good tree dog okay. and he stuck on the tree and crow just kept on going and i kept walking and we get to there and i'm like no kidding there's a bear in it <laughs> wow and i couldn't believe it and I started calling for crow and he circled back around and comes back and I showed him the tree and it's been uh, kind of game on since then. Minus, uh, minus some elk. He, he had a, he fancied elk for quite a while in the winter time. That mm-hmm. was, that was another fun experience. I ended up walking. I put a hole in my, uh, uh, oil pump on my truck one day out when I was trying to run cats, didn't really know what I was doing, but I thought he was running a cat turned out he was running an elk and okay. i had to walk two wow. and a half miles just to get close enough to be able to shock him <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and i've never seen his i never seen a dog walk so slow on his way on his way back out of the woods <laughs> yeah it's uh <clears throat> see th- that's that's where those collars get dangerous because like you can you can pop mm-hmm. them get them off the bad game that's like most people they're they're fine there it's that it's that one step, that snail pace coming back out. You know, they went in there at a million miles an hour. They come out like friggin' slugs. It's real tempting sometimes to oh, yeah. I watched know, them give from... them the whole. Uh huh. Yeah. 900 yards the... with his head down, just walking about yeah. as slow. And he turned around three times to go back after that elk. And I finally just at the end, I guess, gave him a little bit extra and he got the point. And ever since then, I broke him of it. I haven't mm-hmm. had any more issues. Mm-hmm. I think he felt bad for making me walk about two yeah. and a half miles through uh, waist deep snow to get him. But mm. we ended up getting out of there. And that was another time my wife comes with me. So it was uh, it was fun. Gotcha. But it was, wow. it was a learning experience. Yeah, that kind of thing is, you know. But that dog, you guys have been through a lot together. Let's uh, since we're talking about him, let's keep talking about him. Um, he had a bad injury here, not a, about a year ago, year year and a half maybe. Yep, about uh, the it was uh, just going into uh, August last year. He uh, was running a bear and blew his Achilles out. Oh 
man. And uh, came, he came out. He just quit on the bear. It was weird. And another guy picked him up for me. And I, and this dog, like, if you knew him, he's not one to stop. Like, he just, he'll, he'll run and run and run until he's done. And right. he'll usually come out to me, but it's on his own terms. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of questioned it at first. I'm like, he just, I'm like, he just, he, you just grabbed him? He's like, yeah, he just came walking out and he came to the truck. I'm like, oh, that's weird. But, okay, I didn't think anything of it. And I grabbed him and out of his truck and he was on the ground there. I put him down and. I noticed like his leg was pretty like floppy. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time with the dog, so I'm pretty observant. Like I usually notice as soon as something's off, I notice and I could just, sure. it was weird. And it was almost like, what is it? I think it's called his hawk. Is that what it's yep. called? Where his yep. hawk was dropping, almost touching the ground. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this ain't good. Like, like a bunny, so I bring, like a rabbit. Yep. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I brought him back to the house and I'm lucky enough to have a wife that was a veterinary technician. Mm-hmm. And she's looking, she's like, eh, we better call the vet. So I take him to the vet and the vet says, give him pain meds and, uh, he'll, he'll be fine. Give it a month. Well, I, I give it a month. Yeah. I think it actually got worse. And so I, I went back to the vet. He's like, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything for it. You're going to have to go to, uh, a surgical center. And it's a, there's a surgical center here in Flint, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Dan runs it. And I called and yep, just bring him down. Looks at it, yep. Do an MRI on him. Tell me his Achilles. So it wasn't a full Achilles. It was basically the part that uh, makes his foot like tighten and loosen. Yep. And because I guess there's two parts of it or three parts of it. And he tells mm-hmm. me, he's like, yeah, he'll probably be able to run if you don't do it. But at the same time, he said he's probably going to blow the entire Achilles and he'll probably. Um, either have to have surgery at that point or have it amputated. So I'm like, eh, let's just do it now. And that was the most annoying year I've ever spent with that dog. We had him in the house for, for about the first six months. And yep. he was driving me and my wife absolutely nuts. Yeah. Just in his crate all day, just oh, whining man. and whining and whining. Because this dog is like wound for sound. Right. And the good ones so, usually are. <laughs> got it. Oh yeah, just he's he's just nuts. So uh get a cast on, everything like that, and then I took him in. I didn't like the way his leg was still looking. Dr. Dan tells me, you know, just okay, we'll leave the cast on for another month, but I think it's I think it's good. And um when he finally got the cast off, I don't think I've ever been more nervous for anything. I mean, minus having, you know, my wife having the kids and stuff like that, but like, mm. just that first time letting him, like, try to walk around without it. And, of course, he doesn't walk around. It's just he tries to go 400 miles an hour right away. And I'm, like, right. wrestling him, trying to, like, just settle down. And then, so after that, he's walking around good, starts getting it loosened up and everything like that. And then I got a uh, a mini bike. And I basically look like a, a very large man riding around on a moped around my yard. I'm just, you know, working him out, doing a couple laps sure. around the yard, every, yeah. you know, every couple of days, then a couple more, then a few miles. And it's just kind of how I got him into it. And uh, the first day that I let him out to go run a bear, I was just, I was sweating bullets. And he was doing, just looking terrible all, yeah. all this season. And uh, so I finally just take him out one day and I'm like, all right, I'm just, I know there was a bear here. I'm just going to let him out and hit the bait. I said, I'm not going to let anybody mm-hmm. else out. I just let him out. And uh, he goes like two miles and treed, just solid treed. I'm like, oh, this dog quit again. Because he'd just, been, he'd just been running weird, I think, you know, just being out of shape. He's never spent that much time, like, just sitting. And sure. uh, lo and behold, I walk in, and literally there's a bear in the tree. And wow. I had to call my wife, started getting a little, started getting a little emotional. And I'm like, my goodness, I can't believe he finally did it. And you could tell he was yeah. proud of himself. Oh, yeah. So it ended he up turning it. out, he knew turning he out excellent. He runs a little different now. Oh, yeah. He won't he won't run with strange dogs anymore. What? So, like, if they're not one of my dogs, mm-hmm. he just will not he will not run with them anymore. He just does. He follows them almost. And I'm not sure why he's doing that now. But if I, he runs with somebody in my pack, totally fine. Runs with a strange dog. 
just does dumb things. Not not into it. Hmm. Interest that that is weird because yeah mm-hmm. the the recovery, his recovery was brutal. I mean you, you know he drove you guys nuts, but mm-hmm. it was also like I remember talking to you before and after and like during this whole process, and it was just like an enormous amount of crate rest in the beginning. Oh, yeah. It was, I mean, he was crated for nine months, basically. I mean, like, doing nothing. <sighs> That's insane. That's insane. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, you couldn't, you wow. couldn't just let the, let, let this dog wander around the house because there's no just wandering around the house. I right. mean, he'd be just, I mean, and we were Jump, fortunate that he was actually, we, he used like to that. be an inside dog. Oh, yeah. We started him out as an inside dog, so he was already potty trained. So we were really lucky there. Oh, good. So, and then he got, yeah. and then I, oh, this was uh, after or before he treed the bear by himself. He got bit by a, uh, the vet thinks he got bit by a rattlesnake in Michigan. I think I showed you the pictures. You did. That was. Remember his leg was like that, four times the size. <laughs> yeah. It's like an elephant leg. Yeah. That was insane. It, that was yeah, insane. I didn't even know. I got like, him until out of the you truck. Told me that. I didn't even know you guys had rattlesnakes there. Yeah, and I have heard of people. Actually, one of my one of my friends that runs hounds up here, you know, messaged me, and she's the one because I had sent her a picture, and she's like, "My dog got bit last year and died from a rattlesnake bite. It looked just like that." So you might want to talk to your vet and maybe get him back in there. So I did. I right. took him back to the vet. And we kept him there for, I think, two days, and they just gave him antibiotics. Hmm. So we kind of dodged a bullet there, too. Yeah, big time. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And then didn't he get... He he had something else happen to him not that long ago, didn't he? Didn't he get... Oh, uh, he got beat, up, beat for... up twice pretty good this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's just... He's never really gotten beat up too much before. I think he's just kind of, like, not as quick on his feet as he used to be. Sure. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Wow. That's, um, that's an intense story. You guys have been through a lot together. Yeah. He's an expensive dog. <laughs> yeah. But he's our buddy. So he's been, he's been worth it. Good. That's good. How many do you have now? What's your pack looking like these days? Oh my. I usually just take eight with me. Mm-hmm. I have... So in the winter time, I'll run the mom to uh, most of my puppies, Goose. Goose, yeah. Uh, I don't run around Bear anymore. She's just a little too. Uh, she thinks she can. Basically, she thinks she can tangle with anything and come out ahead. Mm-hmm. And she can't. Like even my other dogs don't even take her serious. But she's got the heart. She just doesn't have the. She just doesn't have the. I don't know the intimidation factor or something. I'm not sure what it is. So right. But right. she's got the heart. And then I got, uh, I actually have, I got Sherbert, Chicken, River, uh, Whitey, and Penny. And now I have a Raptor that are all uh, from her. Wow. Wow. Did she come from the same guy that you got your start from as well? Is she somehow related to Crow? She's different blood. She's different Hmm. blood. But yeah, there's a, I kind of was lucky to fall into it. Actually, there's a group of guys up this way that, uh, you know, basically been kind of chasing down this older, uh, older, uh, blue tick blood and smoky river blood. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I got into that and goose just, you know, she turned out to be a really hard hunter, a little too hard, uh, for bear season. I, I kind of been being careful with her, but yeah, I just, I, I kind of got, I was fortunate enough to meet some people and meet some other guys that had really uh, solid studs that I could use and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, I'm able to help them out. They're able to help me out. So it's just, it's just really worked out. It's sure. definitely nice to, you know, be able to have friends and, you know, maintain that, especially when you're all looking for the same thing, basically. Right. Right. I've had conversations with other houndsmen about that kind of thing where, um, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll end up with a couple of these guys who they won't work with anybody else. They won't bring new line, you know, new Mm. genetics into their kennel. 
they won't cross out. It's just line breeding on their own stuff for, I mean, in some cases, 50 years without bringing somebody in. I know a couple of, you know, I know at least one plot guy who's done that. And, you know, I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but um, it seems like it's so challenging to get people all pulling in the same direction who want the same thing. But if you manage to do it, like I've talked a little bit with, with, um, hit of Anderkamp, who's the, who's got those, um, Coles national cat hounds. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was saying was that it's just, you know, he, it's a group of people who all want the same thing. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think if you, if you don't maintain those relationships with them people, I mean, you might, you might be able to keep doing your own thing. Maybe you can do it forever. Maybe you can maintain it. I think it's hard to keep that many dogs to where you'd be able to constantly breed something different and not have, because eventually you're going to find, and I don't know, I know enough about breeding, but I'm not as well versed as many of these other guys. But I mean, if you, if you keep lion breeding super tight, you're going to find anomalies and you're going to find genetic issues. Mm -hmm. And even oh, breeding yeah. like I do, I mean, I keep enough of my own dogs that I've really started to notice like weird, like weird things like uh, just stuff that Goose passes on to the puppies. Like she's a, she's a dog that anytime she, she stays out with my German shepherds and she'll come up and she'll, uh, her way of saying hi, like she's done it since she's a little tiny puppy. She just comes up and just, you know, just bites you a little bit. Not a, not a mean one. Just a little on your hand, just like, hey, what's going on? And then mm -hmm. almost all of all of the females that she throws that I have do the exact same thing. Hmm. That's really and interesting. It's just, I wonder it's if, just odd. Uh, wonder if that's a learned behavior or a genetic behavior. That's that's really cool. I don't know. Maybe she's teaching them. She could be. I have no idea. But who knows? The males don't seem to do it. <laughs> so that's so strange. That is so strange. So the the bear season there, when that's from when to when? Uh, it starts in uh, usually around the second week of July. Mm -hmm. And so I hunt the lower peninsula, and it goes until about the middle of September. Mm -hmm. And then actually the uh, season in the upper peninsula goes till the end of October, I believe. Okay. I don't. I don't go up north because of the wolves. I just. I just stay below the bridge. And that was my next question. Yeah. The se the season up north. It, yeah, it's it's a lot easier to draw tags up there, and there's there's a lot more space to run and stuff like that. But I I don't really. I'm not really in. I don't care that much about killing bears or harvesting bears. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. That's not why I'm. In. I'm more of a dog trainer. I just like to. I'm. I've had a puppy every year for probably the past. Uh, probably eight years, at least one, mm -hmm. sometimes two, three. And I just, I just constantly, I, I like, I like training the puppies and seeing them, you know, turn out and what they're going to do and stuff. And don't get me wrong. I enjoy, you know, someone harvesting a bear. I took a guy this year that's been waiting. He's, that was on his third tag. He'd been waiting 30 years to be able to get one. And I took him and I never seen a guy so happy, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not That's into awesome. taking like a, like a bunch of guys and just out there, you know, slaying the population. I just, I could care less about that. You're, you're not taking the, uh, the slow motion kill shots and putting them on YouTube. No, no, I, there's, yeah, I get a little bit of grief once in a while. Cause I don't, I don't have a lot of cool material that I post. If I usually post something, it's just the dogs or, you know, them mm -hmm. running around or them doing something and. Yeah, I just I don't, honestly like when I get to a when I get to a tree or if you know they got a bear on the ground, I am grabbing dogs, tying dogs back, and you know just all that because I had I had a dog uh, two years ago, Taser. He got killed when he was in West Virginia. A bear came down on him. So that was one thing I always mm -hmm. learned. Like when I first started out, like you know, no screwing around at the tree. Just grab the dogs, tie them back, and then if you want to take pictures, take pictures. Sure. Yep. Oh, I think that makes sense. Not yeah, as cool. The, uh, you don't get as cool a video, but <laughs> maybe not. But you know, you taking care of your dogs, which I mean, ultimately is why we should be doing this. I think. But yeah, it's it's the uh, it is funny the 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 social media thing and the the YouTube thing where it's like 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll reference some hunt that I've done and then I'll mm-hmm. like I always end up with people who are like re- ready to call bullshit. You know, they're just like, yeah, pictures oh, yeah. or it didn't happen. Pictures or it didn't happen. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I can, I can send you pictures. They're not going to be what you're hoping they're going to be. You know, they're not going to be these high quality, you know, anything. It's going to be some picture of my dog, you know, wooling a fox or something like that. You know, it's, it's not that exciting to them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. And there's some, I'll tell you what, though, skeptical. there's some, there's, there are some phenomenal houndsmen that do, I mean, they take videos, they put out good videos and good content. Oh yeah. And I mean, there's just, there's just some, I mean, there are some guys that put in, they put in a lot of work and they do, mm-hmm. they have really nice dogs and they still, they still put out the videos and stuff. And a lot of those guys are guiding and like around here, I, to- I totally understand it. I don't have an issue with, mm-hmm. you know, people taking a ton of people and harvesting bears. Like I'm, I'm good with it. It's just not what I'm into. But you gotta, you gotta have the people, the people here that wait 10 years to be able to, 10 years or more to be able to draw a tag. Like I, I, if it was me, I'd want every opportunity I could to get one. Right. And by having that, that content out there that, you know, they draw, they draw people to them, which I think it's good advertising, but it's, it's sometimes, you know, bad for the sport. I think. I would agree with that, you know, and we're, we're lucky we though, we, there are a couple of guys that the content they put out is such great content. It, it represents us so well, you know, like mm-hmm. um, Brett Vaughn and the hundred born 100 years too late. Oh yeah. Um, it's good. It's a lot of great stuff there. And then, you know, my, my all time favorite channel uh, when it comes to hound, um, hound content uh, on YouTube is, has got to be, you know, I'm I'm not as into the I'm not as into the the coon hunting because we just don't have that those here. So I you know I really right. like like the nightlife the nightlife stuff the stuff that um, Nick Gilliland puts out. Um, oh yeah, yep. I, I also really really enjoy um, George Lambert's stuff. Um, hey, I've heard and, of him, but uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't watch YouTube a lot. No, it's Music Mount. Oh, the mule, the mules. Yeah, mountains, music, and mules, or mu- music, mountains, and mules. Sorry, okay, George, yeah, I'm I know who you're talking this about. Up bad, <laughs> but yeah, he he's got. I can remember the names of his dogs and his 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 mule Cletus, and Scruffy is little feist <laughs> thing. But yeah, no, he's um, yeah. I couldn't imagine trying to trying to ride a horse or a mule through through all this stuff here. It's uh, a, it a lot be, of a lot of work here too. <laughs> uh, has recently been logged. Oh yeah. yeah, and it's just it's it's just nasty stuff. Maybe it would be nice. I don't know. Then I wouldn't get stuck in the raspberries all the time. But it's uh, I don't know. I don't Maybe know not. if they would if they would the horses would enjoy that. It seems like the dogs don't enjoy it. I can tell you, running through the raspberries. Yeah. No. And I uh, I'm not sure the horses like it. And you know, here anyway, it's so steep that I'm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not, uh, I was a halfway decent rider when I was 10. I don't know that I would be able to sit a horse as well as, as I did back then. I think I would, I think I would end up getting yeah, no, I, pretty quick. Yeah. We used to have horses and it, you'd have to pay me a lot of money to own a horse again. They're, they're a lot of work. I, I like them. They're nice animals, they but man, they're just, they were so much work. They are so much work. They really are. And, you know, that's one of the arguments that I've heard made for mules is, you know, if you get a good, a good mm-hmm. mountain horse, I've heard that they, you know, are, are tremendous. And I, you know, I've, I've, I've rode, I've ridden some very good horses. Uh, I was lucky when I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, it really does sound like the mules, just the argument that a, a mule's not going to do anything that's going to get itself killed. You know, where I've yeah. seen one too many times in my history with horses, horses that have just like done something insanely stupid and, you know, just falling off the rails all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Just like completely lost their minds all of a sudden and, you know, hurt each other or hurt their riders or whatever, you know, 
just oh, yeah. a perfect day and just all out of the blue, you know, haven't done any, haven't misstepped in three years and then will suddenly just like, you know, blow up over. Buck the rider off or yeah. roll over yeah. on them or. I, gr- right. I grew up where I grew up down in uh, down in Michigan. We had the the Amish there, and all of our neighbors had a ton of horses. We had a few horses, and it was always somebody getting hurt. I th- they're nice animals. I think it's just like anything else; they're just unpredictable. It's like oh, sure. every dog you think is predictable until it's until it's not. Right. It's the same with horses or any other animal. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, you know, I've I've talked a little bit to George about it. I've talked to Becky about it. The combining horses and, or you know, in their case, mules, and the hounds and. It sounds awfully romantic. I, I, at some point, I would like to try it, but um, I don't know oh, if I'd be try fun. It at my house with my hounds. <laughs> I'd like to go and visit somebody. You know? <laughs> it's kind of like, kind of like having yeah. nieces and nephews. It's nice because you can, you can return them when the shit hits the fan. You can leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Just, like, well, that was fun. We'll see you next Thanksgiving. You mm, know? I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, right. No, it's uh it is fascinating to me though. The the ability to control a pack of hounds from the back of a an animal that size and that, you know, I won't say unpredictable, but certainly they have minds of their own. Oh yeah. Same yeah. as the hounds. Same as the hounds, yeah. So, have you these these litters that you've had off out of um goose mm-hmm. um have you bred crow is, is crow the father of any of these guys nope no i haven't bred crow i i used a i used a stud here in michigan uh twice uh, mm-hmm. i've gotten some really nice hounds off uh, off of that that combination and that's uh that's okay. pretty tight when you say line line breeding and stuff that's that's pretty tight breeding uh, there's a lot okay. of, uh, they throw a lot of JBS chief. Um, and then I used a hound out of North Carolina, met a guy and, uh, went and got his hound. It goes back to a little bit older blood, uh, back to diamond Jim. Uh, okay. And they threw some, they threw some nice hounds too. I, I kept two of those. Those ones bark in the kennel a little bit more than the, uh, hmm. than the local breeding here. I'm not sure why, but. Man, they <laughs> they bark a lot. They're getting better now that they're getting a little bit older. But my goodness, that first year, I was constantly going out there and yelling at them. Yeah, just I mean, just just barking all the time. But yeah, yeah no, my... she's she's thrown some she's thrown some really nice hounds. That's excellent. Wow, that is. Mm-hmm. Did you or buy you her sorry. as an? Ad- no, you're good. Uh, did you buy her as an adult? with the intent of breeding her or did you, was that a pup that you raise a no, razor, that, is a, razor is a razor from a puppy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she started outside and then I kept looking at her outside and I'm like, eh, she's just a little too cute to be outside. Just this little tiny, <laughs> you know, 10, eight, 10 week old puppy when I got her. So we brought her inside and, uh, mm-hmm. she stayed inside with crow for a long time. And no, I was you know I wasn't really okay. ever looking to get into the breeding. Uh, the first time I ever so the first time I ever took her out, uh, I was running a bear, and I stopped and I, I can't exactly remember what I did, but I stopped somewhere and I was going to let the hounds out, and I didn't. I ended up going to a different spot to cut cut the dogs in, and I go and open up the back of there, and I, I think I had three or four dogs at the time. It was those two walkers that I had. And then the two blue ticks and, uh, I go to, I, I let the dogs out and the two walkers take off and I'm looking I'm like, where is goose? She's already gone. She had climbed right out of the dog box and was already running with crow. And she, wow. you know, her little legs, she couldn't keep up. She ended, she ended up falling out, but I'm like, my goodness. And she, she did really good, but she just, I don't know. She. She's just too, she's too rough. Right. And I knew like, uh, it's kind of like a couple of her, uh, her offspring here that, uh, 
Uh, a couple of them got a little hairy this year, and I was surprised they made it. But one spent a few uh, hmm. three night or three days in the uh, in the vet office. They're on fluids and stuff. Pretty sure she got knocked unconscious oh, wow. by a bear, and then went in, okay. went into shock. I had to go carry her out, but. They just get a little, they get a little rough and she's, she's kind of like that too. Mm -hmm. But then when I decided to breed her, I I won't be able to get that breeding again. So I've tried to keep her like, I guess, so to speak, uh, unscathed from the bears, but I let her, I let her run in the winter time. I just let her run coyotes in the winter time just for something to do. Okay. Yeah. Wow during the winter time do you do you run cats or are you mainly running the 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 yotes i have to be honest i am not as dedicated or haven't been in the past uh at running uh cats or uh, coyotes i mm-hmm. last year i ran a little bit more i had run more in the past but i'll be honest a few years ago i fell through a beaver pond like where the ice had uh oh, wow the water underneath of the ice had uh, receded basically. And there was a yeah. big air gap and I was walking on it and I went whoop, right through and I caught myself after that. I was like, eh, I started getting a little more sketched out. I'm like, eh, if the dogs go through, they're probably not going to make it. And I really love, I really love running bear yeah. and I enjoy, I enjoy running in the winter time. I'm probably going to try to run a little bit more this year. I'm just going to be a little more picky about, running around rivers and stuff like that but right. i i just flat out suck at cat cat hunting it seems I, i'll run them and they seem to always get away from me i don't know if it's something i'm doing or what but i'll give her i'll yeah. give her another go this year that's cool yeah the uh, that's something that those of us that run hounds in northern climates have to deal with that I I think is I don't know hard for some of the southern guys to 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 fully comprehend just how scary and hairy it can get is the ice factor oh yeah that's that's gnarly you know I've told the story a couple times on the podcast where Buzz chased a fox he went through the ice once and managed to pull himself out just as I got there and then went through the ice again about 200 meters later or 200 yards later and yeah, by the don't, time don't I got there, don't be getting off on the meters here. Yeah, no, sorry, yards. <laughs> but by, by the time I got there, he uh, he was underwater, and uh, I just managed to <clears throat> sort of slide out there on my stomach and uh, reach down in there and got the first thing my fingers touched was um, the antenna on his Garmin. Oh yeah, I hauled him, hauled him up. To the surface by the antenna on his garment and then hauled him hauled him onto the uh onto the ice and he was boy he was in bad shape he was uh oh i bet they get hypothermic quick oh yeah they do oh yeah they do and he'd mm. spent a bunch of time like between the two dunkings and it, it was not terribly cold but you know it was still it was cold and he between those two dunkings he'd probably spent you know i don't know three three and a half minutes in the water that yeah, that's a to, long time. Yeah, that was enough to chill him to the bone. And yeah, those guys I went tell you, those ice. guys that that really you did. I did once. Yeah, running sled dogs. I stepped. Uh, yeah, no Stepped thanks. off the runners. Yeah, stepped off the runners and just it was uh, uh, an over like an overflow deal. So where what happens is the ice gets really thick and then collapses, especially in, in areas mm-hmm. where the, wa- the water level is regulated, where they'll let out a little bit of water and maybe there's an air gap like you're talking about, and then it collapses. But the weight of the ice collapsing then pushes the water up through the cracks in the ice and you get this new layer of, of ice on top that's not nearly as thick as the ice underneath. And that's what happened. So I could... My feet hit the ice underneath, but it was still up to my armpits. Um, and I couldn't mm. get it. I, like I, I couldn't pull myself out. The the ice just kept crumbling, and I probably could have. At you know, I wasn't far from the shore, so I'm sure I could have sort of smashed my way over there. But um, I just hooked my arm around the sl- the dog sled and had the dogs pull me out, and that got really bad really quickly. Like I was, I had. 
I had clothes in my sled bag in case of an emergency. But by the time I got up off of the ice, got the dogs moving and got out of the area with overflow, you know, it was 25 below probably. And Ugh. my my clothes were completely fro like I couldn't get them off. So I couldn't get them off to change. So I just had to let the dogs run. And they ran home, you know, ran me back to the truck. And I put um I put my dogs into the truck, left all of my equipment, all my sleds and everything up there, and walked walked from my car into my house because I still couldn't get out of my clothes and in right into the shower and turned the shower mm. and stood there in my full winter gear, you know, beaver skin mittens, the works until, until I could <laughs> thaw it out and actually just sort of peeled myself like an onion to get out of all these wet clothes. That you went got, from, uh, you went from bear Saragusa to bear grills real quick. Yeah, it got, it got bad. It got bad. It was, uh, yeah, it, that, that was no fun. And, yeah. You know, those guys, I can't, that... that I go ahead. Oh, I said those guys that cat hunt real hard. They're, uh, they're, they, uh, they got so much dedication. They're, uh, you see some guys do some stuff that you're just like, Oh my goodness. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, they, you know, I, I don't like snowmobiles enough to want to do the winter hunting. You know, I've spent so no. much of my time freezing on the back of a dog sled that, um, mm -hmm. I would rather be, I'd rather be walking to be, to be perfectly honest. I'd rather be warm and walking than sitting on a snowmobile. Um, oh, I get that. And we're not even allowed to use them here. So, um, yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's just one of those things where I think, um, you know, there's challenges to, you know, what these Southern guys need to deal with, with the, you know, the, the snakes and the heat and the sand and the cactus and things like that, you know, but it's, um, you know, running up North is, uh, has its own challenges as well. How are... Yo. How are the coats on your on your blues? Like, are they how, how how are they in the cold? Are they able to handle it so, pretty well? Oh, oh yeah, you'll go out there in the in the middle of winter, and they'll just be out there laying on the concrete, and they're kind of outside of their doghouse. Uh, I I don't have <laughs> any that seem bothered by the cold at all, to be honest with you. And uh, their coats, <laughs> so they have, they have two. I have two different kinds of coats on my dogs and okay one you know i get the lo the longer hair that's a little bit more coarse mm -hmm. and then i just get the shorter hair that's kind of like finer and a lot more smooth and uh there doesn't it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason you don't really notice it when they're a puppy and then when they get a little bit older uh you kind of notice that and sure. yeah i don't they neither it doesn't seem to affect them whether or not they get cold i, hmm. I don't seem to have too much of that issue it's the same with the feet. You know, I don't have any issues in the summertime. Uh, in the wintertime, you know, I don't run as much as other people, but I really haven't mm -hmm. found. But I'm kind of picky, too, so I can't really. I don't really run when the snow is real choppy. I will a little bit. But I haven't found too many feet issues either with mine. Like, they, they seem to be pretty durable all around. Yeah. But, like, again, I don't. I don't hunt like some of them guys. Some of those guys, I mean, they put on a lot of miles in the winter time. Yeah. Yeah, no, some of those guys really get after it. Um, I'm trying to remember who I was talking to. Who had a period of, I think it was like three or four weeks where he was out six days a week. <laughs> Which is insane. Oh, didn't like, you talk, you know, you talked the, to one of the farmers up here, didn't you? I did, yeah. He, I think he. Yep, I talked to no him after that his... family does. Yeah, he. Those guys get after it. I talked to him mm -hmm. right after his Annie dog was killed. 
by yep. a pack of wolves up there. So it's actually been a little while since I've talked to him, so I don't know if he he wasn't totally sure what he was going to do, uh, how he was going to sort of, you know, yeah, he, he wasn't sure what he was going to do when I talked to him. It was right afterwards. Um, so I don't know if he started hunting other places or whether or whether he's, yeah, was able to figure it, yeah, it out. Yeah, it seems to change. Uh, it's changed a lot for them. Uh, the guys up in the UP there with the with the wolves and everything. That, that's just why I don't go up there. I don't know. Like I said, it's not. It's just not worth it for me. I totally agree. There are places here, you know, we're real lucky in where I live. Um, you know, we'll get the occasional wolf sort of rolling through, but it's usually a young one, kind of not. You know, nothing ever establishes itself here. Because as soon as as soon as they start taking livestock in areas where they're not protected, they're done, mm-hmm. you know, and they're not protected here more than you know. There's federal protection, but there's nothing that you know. They're 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 once they start taking livestock, they're 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 pre- it's pretty well signed, sealed, delivered, um, death sentence. Yeah. Um, not here they're treated really, basically you know, like a bald eagle <laughs> yeah it's i mean and it's like that in some other places in norway and it's just like there's a bunch of game there you know but stop dude come on sorry snoring hound um he just wants to get in on the hunt or on the on the podcast here uh, on the podcast with obscene snoring in the background <laughs> He's he's not a good enough hound to be on the podcast. <clears throat> Which one's this? That's Buzz, the one who uh the one who stopped hunting last year. And, well, he fell uh, through the ice a few roll. times. He's got he's had it kind of rough. He's had it kind of rough. Yeah, I mean, he handled that beautifully. I you know. But the uh he got I thought what had happened is that he'd gotten bitten by a fox. Like I, I or he, he did get bitten by a fox. I watched it. I watched the whole thing. <coughs> he pulled a fox out of its den by its tail <coughs> and it whipped around and bit him, oh, yeah. bit him in the face. But he was like two. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing here. That's all right. He was um, a year and a half when that happened, and that was at the beginning of last season. So, yeah, August. Did not get him to hunt at all the whole rest of the season, which goes until April. And by the time I got him, you know, he had a couple of sort of sight chases, nothing, nothing real impressive. And then I got him out at the end of this summer. And he actually started to hunt a little bit. I was he, he opened up a little bit. It was like his his uh, yeah. He was out there looking a little bit better. And then I took him into an area, and he yeah suddenly stopped. Just suddenly broke off. Hmm. He uh, had a fox rolling. It was not far from where he'd been where we'd had the issue the year before, and. Uh, Ran up into the woods, got maybe 250 yards from me, and suddenly went totally silent, and as fast as I've ever seen him run, uh, just hung, banged a hard right, and ran in a straight line all the way down to the road, and then ran four, or yeah, what would it be, two, two and a half miles home. Right back to Ditched right back to the house. Right back to the house. Like ran all the way back to the house. Found him sitting, shaking on the front steps when I walked back down there, or like when I, you know, when I got back to the house. Um, you know. Well, at least you no didn't have to chase him happen. around. Yeah, I guess. But uh, the 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 interesting thing with that story, and people have heard this. Some of you know, a lot of people have heard the story already, but. Um, the next day I took out my American Foxhound female who mm-hmm. she's from 
you know, she's an American foxhound, so running walker, but she is from some fairly high octane um, predator hunters over here. So bear, uh, a little bit bear, but mainly wolf hounds over here, like wolf hunting okay. hounds over here. Um, I've never tried her on either of those things. Um, she's a weird, neurotic, kind of strange dog. I mean, she's a strange dog. I like her a lot, but she's she's an odd dog. Got a crap. Yeah, I've heard you talk of a about rough her quite start. A bit. Yeah, just an odd duck. You know, I mean, she's a friend of mine walked into the house once and offered her a piece of cheese. Like he just like walked into the room. We didn't hear him come. And he walked into the room and was like, hi, Vipi, do you want a piece of cheese? And she, he just spooked her. And if she hears mm -hmm. this car, she'll go and hide, you know, like, so <laughs> things that would make you think she was mentally weak. But hey. so I went out with her the following day after Buzz ran home and, you know, was didn't really know what to think about it. Walked back into some of that same area and she suddenly took off and, you know, was acting not boogery, but real intense. Mm -hmm. And she got, I don't know, a few hundred yards from me and suddenly just went <laughs> absolutely ballistic. I mean, just like I've never heard anything like that from her. You know, her, mm -hmm. she tends to have a fairly sort of rhythmic, nice voice. And this was not either of those things. This was just angry, you know, volume, insane, freaking out. And so I started walking in thinking that maybe she had, I don't know, gotten a badger on the ground or something, that there was something that she was sort of half tangling with mm -hmm. um and walked in there and she was she she had found a brown bear in its bed oh yeah i, I remember you tell or telling you talk about this on uh can't remember who you were talking to but yeah i bet that opened you up yeah, a little I, bit <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah i felt like a real schmuck standing there with my bird shot <laughs> filled shotgun and uh but i'm i'm betting realistically that's what that's what made buzz get all boogery on me and run home is because it was not 50 yards from where he broke off the day before um so i'm i'm betting you ran in there and bumped you know bumped into that bear or you know at least got close enough so that it's he just <clears throat> you know didn't have the in intestinal yeah. for testicular fortitude to hang in there and, and <laughs> you know yeah i feel like it, grind you just, it never, out you or, just you never know. know if we could all be dr doolittle for a day we'd, so we'd maybe figure something out maybe you know but you know you'd think with buzz you know he comes from a line of you know the on his dad's side is a line of good you know good bear dogs good cat dogs and he's a big boy, you know, he's, he's probably 70, 80 pounds and hmm. big and pumpkin headed, handsome dog, big, deep voice. And, uh, you know, Vipi's 45 pounds and he's afraid of cheese apparently. So, you know, it's like that that's going to be the dog well, that's going to have the grit to stay on <clears> that bear. Cause that was the other thing is that once that bear, once I got in there and the wind swirled, that bear was out of there and oh, yeah. she stayed on him for a, a while. Like I, I struggled to actually pull her off of it cause it's super duper, uh, illegal to run them or to run bear with hounds here yeah, heard, in Norway. I heard you say that not here, but you know, what's weird insane. though is, uh, is one of the smallest, the small goose is very small. And then my Sherbert dog, she's, she's just a little tiny thing. You wouldn't even think she's related mm -hmm. to her two sisters that I have out there. And that dog will just flat out run and outrun any dog I have. 
and she'll cross. Really? I mean, this was her first last last season was her first serious bear season. And I mean, she's crossing rivers, crossing creeks. I mean, catching catching the bears, getting beat wow. up. I mean, she ended up in the vet, but she's maybe forty five pounds at, at most, mm-hmm. or may, maybe fifty. But I'm, I'm thinking she's usually right around forty five. You know, when she's running in shape and everything, and she's she doesn't even look like her other. She's built more like goose, and she's by far the most intelligent. And it's weird because like crow. He's so high strung. Like you go to even touch the to let him out of the box, and he's just like pushing. I mean, I had him rip doors off of my dog box before, and uh, <laughs> not her. She, you wouldn't even think she would hunt. She just sits there and just looks at you and just like, all right, just put me on the ground. I'm ready, and she'll just flat right. out get it. But she's just a she's just a little tiny thing. I told her, I tell her, awesome. I'm like, you got to slow down and let these other dogs catch up to you because you keep getting beat up. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I love dogs like that. I love dogs like that. I I remember, um, Jared Moss sent me a video where his dogs had, they, the, the pack had gotten a little bit split up in a bunch of canyons. Um, and this real cliffy area. And he sent me this video of, where you can see some of the younger dogs sort of a little bit lower on this outcrop of rock. And you could see on the other side of this press, you know, of this canyon, dogs were on the other side that had ended up on the wrong side. And there were just kind of dogs all over the place. And on the, on this outcropping of rock was this big old Tom, uh, mountain lion, angry, mm-hmm. angry. And the only dog in that, <laughs> in that mountain lion's face was this little like you know stocky female it was just it was the funniest thing it was just like these big these big dogs that just couldn't you know were on at the wrong on the wrong side of the canyon or whatever for whatever reason couldn't get in there and she was just all over this cat and it was a it was such a cool video that is, that's awesome but i'll tell you it's it's almost like a catch 22 for me because it's just so awesome this you know you raise them as uh some little tiny puppies you know get their head here and then you raise them up and all of a sudden they start coming on like that and this was mm-hmm. uh this year i was car- you know going in to get quite a few dogs i just had just had some mean bears that uh you know were catching the dogs as much as the dogs were catching them and uh right it's uh it's it sucks carrying them out though and that, that Sherbert oh, yeah. dog, when I had to carry her out, I thought for sure she was toast. I think when I, by the time we got her to the vet, her body temp was only 94. So she was, uh, she was out of it. Oh, wow. That was, yeah, that's bad. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was the first day of hunting season too. And then, uh, I took a day <laughs> off and then, uh, took that, took that Tom guy out, the guy that came over here and, uh, we got him the bear, our bear of the third day. And then. I'm like, eh, everybody's alive. I'll be, I'm done for the season. All the dogs are beat up and, yeah. had, you know, holes in them. And I'm just like, yeah, you guys have had enough. And then they annoyed me for mm. the next like four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, it is kind of a catch 22, isn't it? It's like, those are the dogs you want. Those are the dogs you really would like to breed to. But at the same time, those are the dogs that are probably going to get themselves, you know, ha- have a higher chance of getting themselves killed. You know, they're, they're the hardest oh, dogs to yeah, hold on for to, sure. you know, it's, so it's always the, nice, it's always uh, the good ones that get hurt you, and hurt and die young. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's never that, you know, useless me too dog at all the way at the back that gets hurt. <laughs> no, that's a, maybe those are the smart ones. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's at least the dog that's going to live until it's 18 years old. Yes. So I listened to one of your, uh, your last, one of your last podcasts when you were talking about, about the homing on, uh, on the dogs. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I was, uh, my dogs, uh, it kind of reminded me of my dog because if so, these younger dogs that I have, you know, they'll get running the bear. And then if they fall behind, I could be, sometimes I'm too hundred yards from them or less 90 yards into the woods 
and I was laughing when the one of the guy was talking about like they can hear you screaming at them and they'll just they'll just wander right back and mine do the exact same mm-hmm. thing. I can be just a yelling. And it doesn't matter if they just ran six miles or ten miles or three miles. They're going right back the way they came. As soon as they're as mm-hmm. soon as the young puppies are done, they're just whoop, right back. I always know where to pick them up. But my goodness, I, I just thought that was funny. And uh, there are some there are some dogs I noticed that that won't do that. I bought a English dog a few years ago, and she mm-hmm. was good. But if she fell out of it, she got Lyme disease up here, or maybe she already had it. Maybe that's why I, people sold it. I'm not sure, but she got Lyme disease really bad. And after that, she just couldn't keep up with the dogs anymore. And that dog, I got really? we. I would get me and my wife would get so many calls, like just campers and stuff out and about, like, hey, uh, we caught your dog. We gave it water. Uh, she's just, you know, just walking down the road, checking on all the campers and stuff. I'm like, oh my goodness. My wife would call me. I'll be out hunting. I'm like, yeah. My wife would just tell him, she still have her collar on? Yep. All right. Just let her go. My husband will find her. <laughs> but she just, no, no homing <laughs> at all. Like wouldn't, wouldn't try to come back. She just, just walk, walk along the roads and check on campers or, you know, whoever she can find in the woods. Yeah. I'm like, my goodness. So I don't know. I think I, I, think, I think I'd rather have them go back to where they started. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh for sure. Yeah. No, the ability to follow their own track out of a out of an area. You know, I at this point I've stopped even trying, honestly, to to, mm-hmm. to call them out unless unless I've got a real good reason for it. You know, I would rather I would rather that they develop that ability to actually follow their own tracks back even you know even during the you know even when it's windy and rainy and you know i would like them to come out the way that they went in um uh, specifically because i you know i can't stand it (laughs) when i was first getting into this whole hunting dog thing i hunted quite a bit with a dog that he never ever did that he never walked back in his own trail so we'd need to get ahead of him and call him in and then you know if you called him he was fine he had a handle on him but Mm -hmm. it was you know there were there were times when he got way way in there you know and it was just like man you know and it's not like he would sit down and wait for you either and I, i i've hunted dogs that do that too and i hate that a dog that's like, okay, well, I guess I'm done. And they'll sit down and wait for you to get there. I, I would much, much rather have a dog that's going to, you know, might take them six hours to get out, but uh, that I can count on to be more or less where I dropped them. Yeah. And I kind of, I kind of wonder if some of that, Just another thing, it, thing you were talking about, you brought up earlier is the, uh, you know, the being able to shock a dog and stuff like that. And uh, I've been out hunting a lot, mm. and it seems like when people get a little bit frustrated with their dog, or they're done for the day, or something like that, rather than let their dog finish, or try to catch them at a crossing, or something like that, they're beeping their dog, or they're shocking their dog, and it seems like a lot of times that's when you end up mm. having to walk, you know, two miles into a swamp to drag a dog out. I think I I, I just sometimes wonder right. if maybe people are, you know. I don't know. I well, I know people are using the the shock option a little too much. I think there's there's proper ways to use it, and yeah. I was probably guilty. I was guilty of it when I first started, but I hardly ever, I hardly ever shock a dog anymore. Mostly, I can just tone a dog mm-hmm. if I need to, and they they start looking for me or look at me or yep, yep. It, no, it, we're not it's even good, allowed but to do at the same here. time. <clears throat> yeah, I know. That's what I was kind of. I thought I thought that was kind of crazy that you guys can't have like shot collars like are they just say they just say it's inhumane or something yep it's inhumane so it's Hmm. uh a somebody who's been through a course can own a shot collar in order to hold um yeah in order to do what they call um Saladin Hetz Bevis, which is uh, like a sheep aversion course. Okay. 
where they'll shock them they'll shock them off of sheep because they'll let they'll let a bunch of livestock up in the mountains here without any kind of fence or anything so the dogs okay. need to be super super solid on not taking livestock mm-hmm. um because i mean even once and they're done like they're, you have no leg to stand on that's one of the down you know one of the few downsides is you know there's great things about being a, a hound hunter here in norway right to retrieve is the biggest one i love that i can go in oh, yeah. anywhere and get my dogs that's awesome but the downside is if they take a sheep they're done they're i don't have any legal leg to stand on that dog will be destroyed oh really just so just one time oh yeah one time no questions asked mm. and um you know that's so they allow it for those things but then you know like it would have been awfully nice honestly it would have been it would have been nice to be able to shock dan the plot off of moose um because ultimately i believe that's what's probably going to kill him is you know he's he's smart enough around a bear but he's got this insane just like this thirst for revenge against moose <laughs> and eventually it's going to get him killed i mean you know yeah I yeah i believe that, that i could wish that we could have kind of just you know lit him up once and been done with the entire thing but you know instead we're you know it, it's uh, still where he'll frequently break off from a bear hunt or a lynx or whatever and that, go off that was the same as that crow, that crow dog that i have if i wouldn't have been able to shock that dog off of elk he'd probably it's <laughs> it's been five years he'd probably still be out there running that elk i mean he, right. he would hit in the winter time if he hit an elk track that you know, before he was a year and a half old, before his second bear season, if he yep. s- t- smelled an elk track, he was gone. And like me, I was so, you know, I was so stupid every time. I'm like, oh, maybe he's running a cat every time. And then I would finally right. get in there and, you know, he'd win <laughs> one and he'd be gone. And I'm like, oh, he's finally doing it. I said, he's, right. he's, he's finally got a cat. And then I'd get in to where I could, you know, check the track. And I'm like, oh, my God, here we go again. And it'd be just, so, I'll tell you what, sucks so much, man. they can put on the ground, like run and run and run and run and run and run. And then you get close enough and finally mm. just give them a little bit of the juice. And it took it. My goodness. I don't know how many times it was. I was like, I told my wife one time, like this dog is never going to learn, but he finally did. And, uh, now he just, he, I don't worry about him running off game. You know, I'll say that in this next Good. season. That's all he'll do. But or or get into the porcupines. You guys got porcupines there, right? We don't. Oh, you're lucky. We don't have we don't have porcupines. We don't have skunks. No, I've never had I've never had a run with a skunk with the hounds. But I've only had porcupine. Uh, let's see, in like six seven years now, I've only had two porcupines. But I have run with some guys that get into the porkies and I just feel terrible. Them, them dogs. Oh my goodness. And they don't learn either. No, no, they, <clears throat> it, it seems like it triggers something that it's a, such a small animal in their minds. Mm-hmm. that caused them so much pain. <laughs> it's like it's primal just, or something. I have no idea. Yeah. It's like, they can't compute that this, insignificant thing has has caused them that much pain it's it's the darndest thing yeah i've i've wondered about that pretty frequently like why why that ends up happening yeah the first time i ever seen a dog with porcupine was that big great big i mean he was a just a freak of a walker i had and uh he come Mm -hmm. running out of the woods and he's just like i could see him from a distance and he's just got his mouth like wide open and i'm just like oh that is so weird why is he doing that and uh, he gets up here and he probably, I, I don't know how many quills he had in him, but it was at least 2 million. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, all right, dude. I said, you're not going in the box with all them quills. So we just, we just held him down and started pulling him out. And he was good about it. He tried yeah. to bite me once. And then uh, I just, you know, just told him like, hey, dude, we got to make this quick. And we got them all out. But we were still getting like chunks of them quills out for it was a year later, and every once in a while, you'd feel oh, one yeah. still poking through his uh, cheeks and stuff. And those are just those are just nasty animals. I don't know. I don't know what what good they do, but yeah, 
No, I think everybody's had a porcupine feet. experience here. Yeah, my my worst por- porcupine experience was with a team of sled dogs where I stopped and my lead dogs suddenly their heads whipped off to the left or to the right and they just dove into the woods. And you know they're attached like they're attached to the truck. This was during the fall. So mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. And they they the whole team barreled off into the brush. And they came out right in front of the the truck. So they had taken my lead dogs had gone in, gotten a hold of a porcupine, and then brought Ugh. it into the back dogs. So the whole team just like piled onto this onto this porcupine. And I mean, just denuded him. Like there was there were no <laughs> quills left on this porcupine. Um I bet you found you them know, all they, though. They Oh yeah. We had that was an eight dog team. I was able to pull the quills out of two. The rest of them were so badly quilled, like deep down into the back of their throats type stuff Mm -hmm. that we had to go to the vets. And I stopped counting at 2,000 quills. I thought you were going to say 2 million because that's what I I got too. Yeah. Well, I stopped counting at 2,000 quills and that that was me counting the quills I was pulling out of <laughs> like it, it was in, in, an unfathomable amount i mean you would think that even if it had hair that it wouldn't have that many hairs on its body and it was just an unfathomable amount of quills in all mm-hmm. of these dogs and it was like you say it was like a year later you'd still be like petting their heads and you know or their chests and be like how oh, geez what is that yank out some tip of some quill it was it was insane yeah, and if they, get, if they get you know, bad some of those a, guys got if they get bad into a dog's foot or something like that it's uh it's nasty I, I knew a guy that had one uh he thinks that's why one of his hounds died like a year later after it got uh got one in the chest that they didn't find or something and it migrated into his uh to the organs there and got infected bad yeah uh, yeah absolutely you know i had a a couple of those guys got kind of arthritic after a while, and I have to wonder whether it was because of quills. You know, especially the one he had. He had quills that I am, that I know traveled fully through. Uh, you know, through his leg. Mm-hmm. You know, that started on one side of his leg and ended up <clears throat> on the other side. You yeah, know, they're just, he would they're just, just inexplicably nasty. come up lame. Yeah, they're 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 not. I don't miss the porcupines. I don't miss the skunks. Yeah. So did you start, when you started hunting, you started out when you were hound and you started with Fox, right? Uh, yeah. When I got into hounds myself, the very first time I ever hunted over a hound was over a Norwegian dunker hound. And that was for hair. Okay. Um, a neighbor of mine had one of those and he invited me to come and yeah, I was, I was, listening to that hound in the woods was this sort of aha moment for me where just this, the sound of the sort of, yeah, the sound of the the, The sound of the sound of the hound (laughs) sound of the hound echoing off of the Canyon, you know, the Valley walls and, you know, it was, it was wet and misty and it was just, the whole thing was just so magical to me that I was like, Oh man, I need to do this. Um, yeah, I went that I went that first time, ex- like I went that first time cat hunting, and then I got the bright mm-hmm. idea that I was gonna train that one. And I'll I'll tell you what I've never been so frustrated going out. Literally, I had him go. I had that I had crow go out, and he was seven seven months go out one time and just take off. And uh, I'm like, oh, awesome! I'm finally following him around in my truck. I'm like, he's running it. And I walk in and I start calling him because mm-hmm. he just stopped. You know, I'm like, well, it doesn't sound like he's got a bear. I'm pretty sure that's not what it sounds like. And he comes back with just a deer leg. Right. It's just, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, it's fun starting them out. I, once you get a couple established or one established though, that, that, that does it, it, it gets life. It makes life mm-hmm. a lot easier, but 
I feel bad for anybody that's going that's out on hear. their own and mm. and just trying it with no hounds, no friend, no no friends to run with or anything. Like it's uh, I, I was lucky enough to have a couple guys to run with once in a while, but I still went out a lot by myself. And my goodness, you learn a lot. Right. It definitely teaches you a lot. You definitely do, but you know it's. Uh, you know, being able to get out with other people is, is so invaluable. And I mean, even here where we can't run multiple dogs at the same time, you know, it's, it's still, or we, we technically can, but it's, it's, it's rare that it's done. Um, you know, it's, it, it's one of those deals where, you know, I spent, uh, a few weeks ago, I was in Sweden with, um, my friend Eric and Kevin Murphy. And, you know, Eric has this stuff down to a science. I mean, he really, he, he, he knows how to do this. And I learned so much just, just by keeping my mouth shut and observing what he was doing, you know, and stuff that would have taken me years to figure out on my own. Um, you know, it didn't take me more than three days to pick up on, you know, watching him. So it's one of those deals where, you know, even if you're not able to run your own dogs, like I didn't have any of my guys down there, you know, it was still Mm -hmm. just the ability to be able to bounce ideas and ask questions and just sort of just even just observe what people who really know what they're doing, how they, how they go about doing it. It's just like, boy, I wish I, I wish I'd done that. I know some guys that have been doing this. (laughs) doing this a lot longer. I haven't been doing it that long, but I, you, you talk to some guys that's been doing it, you know, 30 years, 40 years, and just the amount of knowledge that they have, or just, you know, the way that they can pattern, if they've been running an area long enough, they can almost tell you where, where the bears are going to cross the road, which way they're going to go, what they're going to yeah. do. It's just, it's, it's, it's actually kind of amazing that they've been able to do that. And they were doing mm. this all, you know, back before there was the GPSs. And even before there was the Tritronics, you know, the, the beep, beep collars and everything like that. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just the amount of the amount that they learned. But at the same time, I've talked to a couple of the old guys and said that uh, they would have had the Garmin's back in the day. They would have, they, it would have saved a lot of good dogs as opposed to, uh, you know, you talk to some of them, they'd yeah. be like, I had, I had 10 dogs and I knew one of them was good, but I didn't know which one. You're like, oh my goodness, that's right. rough. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's I think it's easy to look back on those times with a little bit of nostalgia and how simple it was and things like that. But yeah, you start talking to some of those guys and some of them feel like the I've talked to guys who say that the the GPS is his ruined hound hunting and you know, they're allowed to think that. But I've also talked to a bunch of guys who have said exactly what you just said, that, you know I I think I would have been able to find you know, the dogs that just never came back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well and that's what you've been able to find where. When you, you were know, talking about the homing, I mean, that's probably that's and you guys are probably exactly right. That's probably why a lot of them dogs did get found, because I, I can't imagine, you know, trying. Well, nowadays it might be with cell phones and everything. It might be a little bit easier. But, you know, 40 years ago when there wasn't mm. as many people up here, it was, you know, it was a lot more open. You didn't have all the neighbors and everything like that. But if you, if you lost a hound, like, and they, and they didn't have that homing where they came back, you're just hoping you find it. You're hoping it barks. I mean, people talk about laying their, laying their coats out and stuff, but if you have one that's not coming back, then I don't know, you'd be lucky if you find it. Oh yeah. You're super lucky if you ever find it. And you know, I was, uh, there's a book called, um, meet Mr. Grizzly mm-hmm. by Montague Stevens. And it was written in the, I actually don't know when it was written, but it took place at the end of the 1800s. And this was a guy that was a hundred years ahead of his time in terms of dog training, like pretty, pretty legitimately a hundred years ahead of his time. Amazing, amazing yeah. ability to train dogs this guy had. Um, and one of the things that he actually specifically trained a pair of like a couple of hounds to do was to stay with him but follow the tracks of his other hounds so because they would get out of hearing and he would spend days trying to find them again or they would just sort of slowly filter back into camp or not 
you know, they'd be gone forever. Oh yeah. So he, he actually trained a couple of young hounds to stay close to him, but be sticking sort of, you know, st- sticking to the, to the track of, you know, the, the rest of the pack and lead him to that. That's, pack. A- yeah, that's actually kind of amazing. And that, that's, yeah. that's smart. Oh, it's super smart. Like, that's, uh, that's, you know, if, if suddenly, you know, things go pear shaped and the satellites aren't working and GPS aren't working anymore. That's definitely what I'm going to do. Oh yeah. If yeah. I have the opportunity to still run hounds. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. The problem here is I think if anymore, if you didn't have the GPS is I think it'd be about impossible just with all, with all the private property. We have that, you know, we can retrieve here too. We have the right to retrieve, but you still get with all the mm. roads that are coming up and the population here in Northern Michigan is really growing uh, pretty rapidly. And a lot of the properties getting built okay. up and bought on, bought up and split up and houses are going up. I, I think you'd really have a hard time being able to keep your hounds safe and, you know, out of trouble mm. if we couldn't have the, the GPSs anymore. Mm. Cause I, I know at one point there was a movement to kind of try to get rid of them for hunting, which I don't, I don't really understand what would be the draw to get rid of them for people or why anybody would want, yeah. you know, people to get, you know, not to be able to use the GPSs other than they just don't like people running hounds. But I mean, it really does. It's the same as the, it's right. the same as the, the, the cameras. Um, cause we use cameras and or I do, and mm-hmm. I use them really to make sure that I'm not running a saw with any cubs or anything. I mean, that's, that's the biggest draw for me. If I didn't care, I mean, you can easily figure right. out if, a, you know, a bear was in there. But uh, I, I don't know anybody right. that actually wants to to run uh, a sow with cubs. I mean, everybody I know, it's just a big turnoff. Like, no, we'll go run something else. Or if you don't get to run for the day, you don't run for the day. But it's just. Uh, right. The people that don't understand it always want to ban yeah. it. No, it's. Um, you're going to have people who always want to ban. It doesn't matter what. You could pick some random thing, and I'm sure there's somebody who would, somebody out there who's crusading to ban that thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Everybody's got a purpose. (laughs) People, everybody's got to have a cause. That's what it seems like to me, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, but it's, it's exciting hearing about, about the blue ticks and it, what makes it exciting is that you know here here in Scandinavia we've got the you know we've got the running walkers that's a that that's an established thing over here um okay. the treeing walkers they're starting to get some decent decent lines with treeing walkers over here as well um which is ex- you know exciting and you know the plots they've had since the 90s they've had you know good big game plots here um mm-hmm. you know from you know mo- a lot of them came from steve Moore, uh okay up in up in bc there but um yeah you know the the blue ticks they're extremely rare here i don't i don't actually think i've ever seen one i knew of somebody who had one but i've not actually ever seen one here well, just let and, just uh, let me know. I can ship a few over, and you can be the man, the myth, and the legend that has them. <laughs> the man, the myth, and the legend that uh, <laughs> yeah can't 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 use them on anything, but has them. Oh, they're probably too. Were they too big? No, probably. That's, <laughs> well, yeah I, yeah, I mean that's going to be the thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're too big to run most things. I could run fox with them, or I could run hare with them, which I I don't think that I'd want to do. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, I could go to Sweden during the bear hunting season and run bear in Sweden, but you know, uh, where I was going to go and hunt, you know, where I was, where I was hoping to, uh, to check out where I was going to go and hunt last year. 
they that season was over i don't think it took them more than two days because it's like a quota system so once they hit a certain number of bears they shut the season down it i mean it was over in the blink of an eye and it's just something about i don't know having well you wouldn't you honestly wouldn't want me to send yeah you wouldn't want me to send over the blue ticks then because they'd shut it down a lot quicker yeah no (laughs) just kidding yeah that's right <laughs> right but yeah it's, it's just the idea of having hounds that i can only use you know a couple of days a year yeah it's not fair to the, it's not fair to the hounds really but no i don't think it is if i could get them on fox so that they had like some random you know secondary thing to run Oh, I think you could get them to... And then ran them on bears? You could get them to run Fox because I, I can put them on uh, uh, the coyote here and they'll just... They they love running them. Like, there's... They, they enjoy it. They do? Oh, yeah. Hmm. We don't we don't really have enough Fox here. Um, they kind of got outrun by the coyotes when they came up here, the way I understand it. They don't really get along mm. with each other. And... Uh, so I don't no, know. the coyotes will dig up and eat the foxes. Yeah. Yeah, we try to get. I at least me, I try to get as rid of many as I can. I actually here at the house, I I got a bait out here, and I usually shoot them off of the bait, trying to get rid of them. And then I get, I'm actually starting to get fox out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got w- one or two that'll come out and eat on the bait every night, and I just leave them alone because they just they kill a lot of the mice and everything, and they're they're fun to watch. They're a little more interactive yeah. and a little less. Uh, I oh, feel they like. Are. Uh, they don't really run from you as much They'll, You know, if you're, they'll sit out there. Yeah. They'll sit out there and watch you in the yard and stuff like that. And they don't bug nobody, but I don't know. I just don't, the coyotes, I don't know. They just don't, they don't do it for me. No, I, I can agree with that. It's a little bit like the difference between watching somebody who's, you know, been smoking a little bit too much marijuana versus somebody who's been smoking, you know, meth. <laughs> yeah. Know, crack cocaine. Uh, you know, one, it's like one's got the more fox teeth just kind of sitting there, kind of, <laughs> right? The fox is just kind of sitting there, sort of half bleary eyed, look, kind of looking at you, like, okay, got the munchies, wondering if you have something to eat. The coyote mm-hmm. will come in and be, you know, they'll just like, oh, you've got a cat. Well, uh, you're having a family reunion. Well, I'm going to come in and eat your cat in front of everybody. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. They like, don't. They don't they're, care. They're nar. They're gnarly animals. No, nope, they're gnarly animals. They they really are. And now I got, I even yeah, got my German shepherds who th- hmm. who think they want to start running them too. And I'm all the time I'm having to call them. They start getting. They'll see them out there at the bait, and <laughs> the one I got, the male, I got two male German shepherds, and the one will just go out there charging after them. And I'm just like, luckily, luckily enough, I have a cell cam, so I usually catch them out there before he gets too far, and I call them back. It's a nice thing about them. You call them, they come Good, right yeah. back. If that was a hound, if that was a hound, at least one of my hounds, that thing would be gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like that. that uh, yeah. Once that trigger's flipped, they're gone. Got a handle on my guys, and yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, we don't uh, we don't have the coyotes here, but actually one of the things totally random, but it just made me think about it. One of the things that we do have here now um, are jackals of all things, like the dogs. Um, yeah, like the like the African small coyote ish things. Yeah, can you run them? Migrated golden jack. I don't know. I'm actually still trying to figure that out. We have I've never seen one, but um they they actually have established themselves here and from where they were 40 years ago to where they are now in terms of how f- how enormously their range has expanded. Um I read an article and I don't know whether it's true or not, but I read an article saying that it was actually the the fastest expansion or like naturally occurring expansion of um, of a mammal's terrain, um, you know, home hmm. range or whatever, whatever you call it, ha- habitat um, ever recorded. Because it's not no, just random animals; it's like they've established right populations the entire way. That's kind of like every, you know, everybody was saying the hogs become, are going to end up here. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, because yeah, the hogs are the hogs are ending up here too. But oh, really? Um, yeah, it's oh yeah, yep. Oh, those those razorbacks, those Russian wild boars. Oh yeah, they're gnarly. Yeah, they're rough on <laughs> the dogs. Are gnarly. Super rough on the dogs, you know, and it's 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 like Von Plot said, you know, running wild boar is the fastest way out of the dog business. Yeah. You know, I, you see a lot of them get, uh, just, get killed I mean, every year. Oh yeah. I mean, they're brutal. I mean, there was a hunter here in, um, in Sweden, um, who was hunting wild boar. I think he had wounded it and was tra- trailing it with his dog. And suddenly it busted out of the woods and came after him. And, managed to manage to hook him and rip up his thigh as he was climbing up into a into a like a hunting tower you know a, a tree stand type of deal to to get away from it and um it wouldn't let him get down and he ended up bleeding out in that hunting tower he died they found him like up there dead as a doornail oh my goodness which is tr- i mean so there, those those things are gnarly. You guys probably yeah. can't. You guys probably can't carry pistols there, can you? Nope. Nope. Stuck with the uh, the shotguns and the rifles and the the shotguns. If I know the shotguns, you can use. You can hunt wild boar with shotguns as long as you're using the slugs. Like okay. Buckshot's not good enough. It's got to be a slug. Hmm. And I think I would almost prefer just to have a rifle then, you know, like if. Yeah. Are you, uh, can you do that? You guys probably have, um, are you only allowed single shots there, right? Or bolt actions? Uh, bolt actions, lever actions are fine as well. Okay. Uh, limited number of shots you can have in the magazine. So you can have one in the pipe and then two. Two in the mag, okay, yeah. is is what we're allowed here, and it's the same even with like pump pump shotguns and things like that. You can you you can only have three shots. Okay, yeah, the lever action. That's kind of um, that's kind of what I've gone to now, as far as like uh, you know when I when I go out uh, you know during the kill season here is I just uh, forty five seventy. I don't know. I just I just like it. Uh, mm-hmm. I got, I bought a Henry mm-hmm. and, uh, man, it's just a, just yeah. a smooth gun and, you know, it delivers a WAP and I feel like it's just got, I was talking to a guy the other day, a big gun guy. And, uh, I told him, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just growing up. My dad making me watch all the John Wayne movies and the cowboy movies that I just, uh, you know, I'm just drawn mm-hmm. to the lever actions. Yep. No, I, I totally agree. I've got a, I've, I'm the only person I know here. Who has, or that's not true. I know one other guy who's got a lever action, uh, Henry 3030. But I've got, um, I've got a lever action and a caliber that I can hunt moose with. So a 308. Okay. Um, a Browning BLR 308. I love that gun. Oh, yeah. And they're, it's, they're nice. It's, they're so nice. They're, it's just, you know, it's tight scrubby forest here it's nice not to have some big old thing that keeps getting caught on branches and things like that it's just it's it's a nice gun it packs a wallop that's the to worry about it that's the magazine you know, just, the magazine fed uh, uh lever action right that's right okay. and that's another reason why i liked the blr versus something else was that uh i could put the the uh you know, the, the, the good hunting ammunition and I didn't need to do snub nose yep. um, rounds to avoid setting them off in the pipe. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, you know, and you know, when I'm hunting deer, it's rare that I'll, it's rare that I end up in a situation where I take a shot that's more than 30 or 40 yards. It's just, it's just tends to be how they, how it happens. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the, the same moose, here. It's yeah. With the moose, it's not uncommon to end up in a situation where you know you're shooting at a hundred and hundred and twenty yards, and then it's nice with just it's it's nice with some 
properly, you know, proper rounds that are are, are going to have a little bit better accuracy at those distances. Yeah, and you're you already got your moose for the year, didn't you? So. Yeah, I've gotten two. I've got uh, gotten two this year and two two deer. So freezer's starting to look pretty good. You got to make yourself a moose skin hat or something. I do. I've actually got a big old moose skin on my wall, and I've got another one that I'm gonna that I just got that I'm gonna put up on the wall. So I'm gonna uh, that their their hair is very very uh, bristly. It's almost it it almost feels like wild like wild boar hair. Okay. Um. So it's not not particularly comfortable to have to have on. Yeah, but I can see that. Um, yeah, they're those are cool cool animals as well. Cool animals as well. But Ethan, it has been, uh, we've been going for about an hour and 40 minutes now. It is approaching one o'clock in the morning here. Yeah, it's 740 here, so, so not too bad. Before I start to... S- <laughs> yeah, you yeah. look like you're getting a little That's tired. Not too bad. I, I know, I figure I'll, I'll call it an evening before I start slurring my words and sounding like I'm drunk. Well, I wasn't, you can attest to I the wasn't going to tell everybody been, you've been you know, drinking the whole time. But I've been drinking. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The whole, yeah, the whole, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, but it's been, uh, I'm so super psyched that we got this, uh, got this to happen. Finally. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. I appreciate, and, um, appreciate you staying up and talking I, to me. Uh, I'm not the most, I'm not the most exciting guy, oh, but uh, I try to I try to have a few stories here and there. It was fun to talk to you, man. It really was. I appreciate you coming on and, and, uh, yeah, hanging in there in the whole trying to make it happen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Glad I could. So, yeah. I'm going to, uh, we'll stop recording here. And, uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Man, I love that sound. <laughs>